This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is good to be worshiping with you on this Lord's Day. I remain grateful that we can gather for worship virtually, even while we are physically separated. We now know what most of us, I think, assumed, and that is that it will be some time before we are back together, um, worshiping in, um, in our sanctuary or outside in, uh, under the picnic shelter. And I want to encourage you, those of you who have not tried Zoom, to uh, do so. It is a great way for us to have a chance to see each other's faces in some cases, or at least talk to one another during this time when we cannot all be together. Those of us who have done it have really enjoyed it. And I will be happy to practice with you during the week um, so that you're more comfortable with it. You also are able to call on your telephone. You won't be able to see us, but you would be able to talk. Um, so we will have a Zoom fellowship gathering at 9.30 each Sunday morning prior to worship. And we would love for um, lots of you to join us then. I invite you now to make your space into a worship space. You may uh, wish to light a candle, open a Bible on the table in front of you or place a cross there or put your cell phone away. Whatever um, you might want to do to create this as a worship space for you. And I encourage you to give yourself the gift of being fully present during this time of worship. We are surrounded by the love of a good and gracious God who embraces us in arms of grace in our time of need. May we rest there. I invite you to join me in a breath prayer. Um, when you breathe in, think, be still. And as you exhale, think and know that I am God. Hear these words from Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all of his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Come, let us worship God. Let us pray. We love you, Lord, and give thanks, for you indeed hear our cries. You walk with us, even on this long road of physical distancing, and give us reason to hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. We call on your name and pray, save us and your world. We call on your name and pray, forgive us when fear blinds us to the needs of others, when fear looms larger in our lives than our faith in you. We call on your name to open our eyes to your presence and to release our voices to sing your praise. We pray in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. God. 
God of the sparrow, God of the whale, God of the swirling stars. How does the creature say oh? How does the creature say praise? God of the earthquake, God of the storm, God of the trumpet blast, how does the creature cry woe? How does the creature cry save? God of the rainbow, God of the cross, God of the empty grave, how say grace? How does the creature say thanks? God of the hungry, God of the sick, God of the pruning hook, how does the creature say love? How does the creature say God of the neighbor, God of the foe, God of the pruning hook, how does the creature say love, how does the creature say peace, God of the children say joy how do your children say home boys and girls i sent you a link to our scripture lesson today that is done in slow motion with legos so i think you are ready to listen to the scripture lesson today with all of us but if you will first um, help lead the congregation in the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And then if you will help me to lead the prayer for illumination with um, our sign language. So remember spirit, the L's, living God with our thumb towards us, fall afresh on and me, our pinky is close to us. And then you might remember melt, me, mold, fill, and use. Okay, let's start. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Today we're moving to the Gospel of Luke. In Luke's account of the resurrection, a number of women go to the tomb and two men in white dazzling clothes tell them that Jesus is risen. They run back and tell the disciples, but the disciples think of it as an idle tale. 
Peter does go back to the tomb and finds it as the women had said. And now we begin in later in that day, and this is Luke 24, beginning with verse 13. Now, on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other as you walk along? They stood still and looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all that, this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things? and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us because it is almost evening and the day is nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had made how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread this is the word of the lord thanks be to god perhaps you've heard the um, joke going around that until further notice the calendar is now this day that day the other day someday And we know how that all feels because all the days seem to be running together. Others have compared this time to us living as if in the movie Groundhog Day, that movie with um, Bill Murray, who is caught in this um, circle of time and repeatedly relives the same day. I, I try to call my mother almost every day, and you know, it's beginning to get hard to know what to talk about. Neither of us have seen anyone. Neither of us have been anywhere. 
and we are certainly consumed with the same news, which while it has some um, hints of hope in it, is often just um, discouraging and disorienting as we look to an uncertain future. Cleopas and his companion, most likely his wife, travel from Jerusalem to Emmaus, wrapped in confusion and despair, utterly disoriented by the events of the last three days. And those events are consuming every moment of their waking hours. On the road, on that seven mile journey, which is a long walk, they are met by Jesus, but they don't recognize him. At first, they're kind of incredulous that this stranger doesn't know the news of the day, the thing that has been consuming them and all of their friends. But still, they tell him the facts, and then they voice their pain, they air their fears, and they tell him all about their lost hopes. And you know, I've always found it interesting, Jesus doesn't reveal himself to them right away, but neither does he scold them or test them or humiliate them. Instead, Jesus journeys with them. He is present with them in their disappointment and in their confusion. And only after they have gotten everything off their chest does he then begin to speak. And he opens up the scriptures to them. Wasn't it necessary that the Messiah should suffer and die, he says? After all, the whole story of Scripture, the foundational pattern of Scripture, is life emerging out of death. From the incredible chaos at the beginning, God creates life. From slavery comes freedom and a homeland. Out of the destruction of the exile, comes a renewed people. God brings life out of death. Didn't it have to be so for the Messiah as well? Of course, they still don't recognize Jesus, even as he gives them a Bible study. It is not until that surprising event, when they are at table with this stranger and he takes the bread, blesses and breaks it, and gives it to them. It is only then that their eyes are opened and they recognize him. And they run back to Jerusalem to tell the disciples what they have experienced. I can't help but hear this story with a little bit of sadness we can't gather around the Lord's table together in worship. We can't gather in Bible studies or Sunday school classes to study scripture and discuss what we read. And we have little or no opportunities for surprise encounters with strangers. Strangers in whom we so often encounter the risen Christ. But here's the thing, like Cleopas and his wife, we do have our own dinner tables at which we can break bread and pray and talk about matters of faith. And we do have the Holy Scripture that we can read in our homes, Scripture that reminds us of God's faithfulness and that through the power of the Holy Spirit reveals the risen Christ to us. And yes, these days are an awful lot like Groundhog Day, one day not much different from the next. But there's an aspect of living in Groundhog Day, living 
the same day over and over and over again that brings comfort and strength and perhaps courage. And it is that aspect of living the same day that is the case through all of our life, not lives, not just today, but always. Because each and every day, we wake up to God's mercies. Each day, the risen Christ journeys with us. Each day, we know that death has been conquered, that God has the power and also the desire and will to bring good out of bad and life out of death. And each day, we know that Jesus is Lord. In this time of this day, that day, someday, the other day, there is a sameness and consistency for which we can give thanks and praise. Jesus is still Lord. The risen Christ still journeys with us. Death has still been conquered. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, give praise to his name. Friends, God's gifts to us are bountiful. In gratitude, let us give our hearts and the gifts of our labors to God. And you may do that by going to our website, norwoodfpc.org, or you can mail your checks to P.O. Box 596. I also want to remind you that the food pantry needs food. They are having a difficult time buying bulk food due to supply chain issues, and so gifts of food are, are more important right now than gifts of money to the food pantry. You can drop off your food outside the Fellowship Hall door of the Methodist Church in Norwood, or take it to Stanley Community Christian Ministry on Mondays or Wednesdays. I have just a, a prayer praise as well as a couple of concerns. Um, Bobby's daughter is doing well and we pray that she will continue to do so. Tom Garner had surgery for skin cancer and he is recovering from that with stitches and a black eye so we, and some discomfort, so we pray for him. And Dwayne's stepfather, Dan, is back in the hospital with an infection. And so let us keep those and others in prayer. Let us pray. Creator God, for the beauty of the earth and the glory of the skies, for the melody of songbird and the percussion of frog croaks, for plants and vegetation that delight the eye, and for those that nourish our bodies, for sea and land, mountains and lakes, air and water, we give you thanks and praise. Forgive our careless living that degrades and destroys the earth and its inhabitants. Teach us to touch the earth lightly, for we seek to be good caretakers of your creation. Compassionate God, it is difficult in this moment not to be near some of the people we love, some of whom we are worried about. So we pause to say out loud the names of people we wish were right here next to us and to pray for their well-being. We lift up to you all who have asked for the prayers of this congregation and ask that you provide according to their need. We also want to call to mind the people we cannot name, whose names we do not know, 
but they we know they need our prayers and God's comfort. We pray for those who suffered, suffered damage and loss in storms this week. For the Nova Scotia community following the mass shooting there. For those who have lost loved ones. For those who are sick and recovering. For caretakers in homes, medical facilities, and nursing homes. For prisoners and those who work there. For those who are feeling alone and isolated. For those who are helping and are so very tired. Gracious God, we thank you that you journey with us. Open our eyes to see resurrection happening even in these heartbreaking times. Use us to bring healing and hope to a desperate world. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Friends, remember that you are loved. Remember that the risen Lord journeys with you. So have courage, be strong, say, stay safe, and wash your hands. And the blessings of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen.